We've convened a panel of distinguished experts, uh, the CEO of Gray Healthcare Group, Lynn uh, Foss O'Connor, to talk about best practices in healthcare marketing, John Camp to talk about legislation in the healthcare area, and also Wayne Pines to talk about changes in the regulatory landscape and how they affect uh, the healthcare industry. At APCO, we think it's important to foster a dialogue about healthcare marketing. There's a lot of changes going on. Probably more changes are happening in the healthcare industry as a whole than ever. Uh, traditional models for healthcare delivery, financing, and access are changing, and so are also the models for communication and marketing. We are bringing together thought leaders and experts uh, to convey their opinions and experience to generate uh, a debate about how companies in the industry can best market products, services, communicate about their positions and opinions in a way that helps them achieve their business goals, but also make sure that they stay within the bounds of what is uh, compliant with regulations such as set by the FDA and other authorities. There's a lot of changes happening in healthcare, both in the United States and actually across the world. We see new healthcare reforms, attempts to change the way we finance and provide access to patients and consumers to healthcare services. We see new structures with the development of new models for how providers, physicians, hospitals, and all other healthcare professionals collaborate into more integrated and connected care network. We see the proliferation of all the new media, social communities where people talk about their conditions about health, and also smartphones and personal health technologies that make us all better at accessing information. But all these things also present challenges because what about all the information and all the knowledge we generate? How do we make sure that we get access to the right information? How do we separate between uh, rumors and fact and science-based information that really truly improve uh, healthcare based on science. Well, the big two issues that happened in healthcare reform are the Sunshine Act, which happened, and the elimination of the tax deduction for marketing costs, which didn't happen. First, the one that happened. The Sunshine Act, which calls for transparency in all financial relationships between pharmaceutical, bio, device companies, and prescribers, doctors, uh, will go into effect here this year. Actually, uh, data collection on that starts August 1st, so we're starting right now. Uh, and the, the requirement that all of these data be up on a national registry website that requirement, uh, the website will be up in uh, late 2014. Now the idea on all of that of transparency is a pretty good idea. Nobody's against transparency. It'd be like being for pornography in Washington, which is something you just can't do, right? We're in favor of transparency, but there's, a, there's some difficulty in this particular statute. It calls for some of them are the picayune little rules that are hard to follow. In some cases, uh, they're very specific, uh, maybe too specific, uh, requiring uh, all kinds of things to be reported, like journal articles and other things. Uh, but they're also very vague. So it's going to take a while to get through the transition period to get doctors and others used to the whole process. But the thing that concerns me most about that whole rule is that there are some people who really want to kill these relationships between industry and the clinical community. And that would be a bad idea. America won World War II because industry, academia, and the government all got together essentially to bring together the force that enabled us to win that war. The analogy of the war that we have to win in America today is delivering health care to America's patients in a way that doesn't bankrupt the country. That's what health care reform is all about. The only way we're going to do that is the collaboration between doctors, the industry, and academe. 
And those people who would like to eliminate all of those relationships, those collaborations, I think are just on the wrong road. So we'll see going forward whether there is more legislation of this same type or we stick with the transparency and we go through that. Now the one that didn't pass, that's one maybe that I'm at least as much concerned about, and that would be an idea that's an incredibly bad idea that essentially you would eliminate the tax deductibility of all communication costs that drug and device and bio companies do. Essentially all marketing costs and communication costs would not be deductible as an ordinary and regular business ex expense. That would increase the cost of all communications by the tax bracket, or the tax rate of the company, somewhere around 25 to 37 percent. This would be a bad idea. Information is what enables the diffusion of innovation, which enables drugs to get into people's hands that need them and know how to use them safely and effectively. If you eliminated the tax deduction, you'd make that more expensive. If you made that more expensive, people would not learn about drugs nearly as quickly and would not learn about how to use them safely and effectively. So those are bad ideas that I hope go away, but oftentimes in Washington, bad ideas hang around way too long. A lot has been going on in court in the last couple of years and it's going to affect the way drugs are marketed. FDA is in denial about many of these things, but the FDA is going to have these court cases, going to have to deal with these court cases soon. Let me just talk about two of them. A Supreme Court case about 18 months ago called IMS versus Sorrell. There, many states, including Vermont, had decided that drug companies shouldn't be able to use overnight prescription data for marketing purposes. The Supreme Court made it very clear that using data was one of the things that enabled drug companies to do what they do effectively and efficiently, and it was protected by the First Amendment. Also in that case, it derided the idea that drug companies would not be able to use these data, but other people would, and it established the principle that made it essentially clear that it was unconstitutional to treat drug companies differently from other companies. That case and those ideas came to a head in a case called U.S. versus Coronia. In Coronia, again, there was a question where uh, the drug companies were, were not able to speak freely about the off-label uses of their drugs when other organizations and groups, including counter-detailers, could talk about those. And the court decided in that particular case that Coronia, who was scheduled to go to jail for talking off-label about the drugs that he was selling for the drug company, should not go to jail. There was a First Amendment right for companies to tell the truth about their products and that the regulation of FDA, essentially FDA's rule that if it's on the label it's true, if it's off the label it's false, that that regulation is no longer going to work under the First Amendment. What is going to happen? We don't know. How long is it going to take? We also don't know that. That's largely because the FDA and the Kubler-Ross view of denial in, in the face of death is in the denial phase and essentially denied to take this, court, this case to the Supreme Court of the United States. We knew because we knew they wouldn't do it because they were going to lose. They didn't take it because they were going to lose. When is this going to come to a head? We don't know, but it will be likely sooner rather than later. Over the next few years, there will be a different standard of care. The label will no longer be the only point of departure about what's true and what's not true. And we'll be able to say more things about the effective uses of drugs off-label. We expect that the new standard of care will be something that will be closer to the FTC rule of law which essentially requires a consumer to be misled and requires companies when they do talk about their drugs to have evidence, systematic evidence that demonstrates that what they say is true. So we're not going to go through uh, a, a free-for-all that anything can be said. 
we're going to go to a still a very careful protective regulation that essentially ensures that what drug companies say about their drugs is true but enables them to say much more than is on the label as the science advances. So stay tuned on this. Don't go home and say tomorrow we can, we can start marketing our drugs off label because FDA is likely going to bust you if you do that. But stay tuned on this because over the next couple of years the law is going to change and we'll have a different standard of care. Well, everybody's waiting for FDA to issue its social media guidance. I think there will be a lot of disappointment when the guidances come out. The guidances are scheduled to be issued by the middle of next year, by the middle of 2014, because that's what the Congress ordered, and the FDA is in the process now of drafting them up. What the FDA has made clear over many years is that basically the principles that apply to all other communications from a promotional standpoint are also going to apply in the social media context. And the FDA has issued a number of enforcement actions which reinforce that they intend to uh, stand by the same basic rules that they always have. So anybody who expects there to be radical changes in the way that FDA regulates this marketplace are going to be very, very disappointed. I don't think that uh, the FDA is going to permit, for example, any promotional activities without assuring that there is substantial information about the risks of the product as well. A lot of companies are turning to uh, health education, disease education, instead of product promotion as a means of using social media. And I think that that's a wave that's going to sustain over the years. Well of, well, of course, the Affordable Care Act is the, is the big kahuna. The Affordable Care Act is going to change the way that business is done. From the standpoint of the pharmaceutical uh, industry, what's going on at the FDA is very important and has not received a lot of visibility. The, under the law that was passed in 2012, FIDASIA, FDA has the authority to designate certain products as breakthrough products. And the FDA already has designated a number of products as breakthrough products. Those products are going to receive priority attention, even more so than in the past, at the agency. And that's going to expedite the approval of a lot of products. What will affect the entire industry is that the FDA will meet more frequently with companies during the course of their application so that the risk associated with product development will be reduced to the extent possible. It doesn't mean that ineffective or unsafe products are going to get onto the marketplace. It just means that companies are going to have more direction from the agency. There's going to be more transparency. There's going to be more communication. And we're already starting to see that. One of the things that's going to really affect FDA and already has is sequester, the lack of funds. Under the budget, that is now being proposed for the agency, there really is no growth in the drug area. And so a lot of the initiatives that the FDA would like to do to make the approval process even more expedited just simply can't get done because the money isn't there. Industry understands that. And industry has been seeking more funding for FDA as have all other constituencies. And that's very, very important because if we're gonna have innovation from a uh, drug perspective, then we have to have innovation in the regulatory process. Um, this is kind of a never before moment in the history, I think, of pharmaceutical marketing where almost everything that we used to do has changed. So uh, the biggest impact really is the, the erosion of the impact of sales forces. Um, certainly coupled with the fact that digital is now and digital health and mobile health is probably the biggest um, growth area for the business. So we're seeing many clients who are adjusting their sales strategies, adjusting their marketing strategies, looking for ways to communicate with professionals where they are. And in most cases, that's probably going to be in the EMR, that's probably going to be on their mobile phone. And certainly, to some extent, they've got to really look at a digital strategy that's much more holistic than they've looked at in the past. Um, the other huge trend is consumerization, the mass consumerization of health. Consumers are finally in the driver's seat. They're certainly seeking information. 
Um, and then lastly, I mean, you can't ignore the fact that the Affordable Care Act is going to change everything. Many, many physicians are now part of networks. Those networks have treatment guidelines, and they are all being pressured to um, improve patient outcome, which you know we find very exciting because never before have we seen a situation where all the alignment is there in terms of the need to improve health. Every single stakeholder is rallying around that. And we as communication specialists are having a field day figuring out how to use communications in the best way to improve outcome. Hardly past its prime. DTC is here to stay, um, but I would say that you're probably going to see direct-to-consumer media used differently. So we were living in a very television-centric world. Uh, when the industry started to communicate with consumers, they thought television was really the, the way to go. Now again, with mass consumerization, with digital being there, with most people relying on their cell phone, I mean, something like 454% growth of caregivers using their mobile phone for health information, you can't ignore that trend. 90% of people have cell phones. Not as many people have um, internet connections. And so consumer marketing is here to stay. It's probably going to get better. It's going to get bigger, and it's going to be more comprehensive. And you'll probably see, use, you'll see the impact in the television space changing, that people are going to use smarter media buying and more targeting of television because it's very expensive.